Add a circle with 8 vertices, rotate it 90 degrees. Position it at his wrist. Scale it down in edit mode. Position and extrude it into his sleeves. Scale this circle up. Select this circle, extrude and scale it. Then extrude and drag it on the X axis. Extrude and scale down. Add a subdivision modifier. Put an edge loop in here. And place one here. Alt select this edge and bevel it with B. Do the same on this side. Select all and smooth shade. Select the glove part of the arm and scale it on the Y and Z axis. And now, just scale these parts of the wrist to match the reference. I like the hands I saw in one of my reference models, so I tried a new method to attempt to recreate something similar to them. I really liked how they ended up turning out, but it wasn't the easiest process to follow along with. So I'll show you an alternate way first, then I'll go over the hands I ended up using on the finished model. There's a bunch of simple ways to make fast hands. Here's one method I use. Add a cube. In front ortho view, scale it down on the Z axis. Select this front face and scale it down even more. In top view, add three edge loops, then one this direction. Move it a little closer to the right side. Select this face, duplicate it with Shift D, extrude it out on the X axis, scale down the fingertip. Add your finger joints with edge loops. Duplicate this finger four times. Scale and place the fingers. Shift the vertices on the finger side of the palm to give it a slope to match how the knuckles on your hand line up. Reposition the fingers to sit roughly in between edge loops on the hand. Scale down on the Y and Z axis if needed. Shape the back of the hand. With face select, select these four faces. Extrude on the X axis. Scale and delete. Select this edge loop and use the smooth tool to round it a bit. Select this edge and slide it towards the center of the palm. Select these two faces and extrude them. Might as well use the smooth tool again. Rotate and pull out these faces. Select these back two vertices and pull them back. Do some slight shaping. Add a six vertex circle. Rotate by 90 degrees in front ortho view. Scale it down and extrude it on the X axis. Scale the back circle slightly. Position it here to be a thumb. Select these four vertices and make a face. Delete these two faces and connect the thumb to the hand. Position things so it's shaped something like this. Edge slide this inner edge to shape the fingertip. Select these two faces and use Bridge Edge Loop, you can find it under the Edge menu. I assigned it to my Quick menu, so I only need to press Q to use it. Otherwise, hit F3 and search for Bridge Edge Loop. Connect each finger to the hand with Bridge Edge Loop. Pull down this edge, and round the side of his hand by moving the edges closer together. Using the knife tool with occlude geometry off, cut in a thumb joint. Add a subdivision modifier. Pull down the palm near the thumb. And if you really want to, dissolve these edge loops. Add an edge loop here. Select the edges where his fingers connect and hit V to rip them apart. Fill in these openings with faces. Add an edge loop down the middle of these three faces. Select these new edges and scale them on the Z axis. You can rotate the fingers slightly. Smooth shade and recalculate outside, and then reshape anything that looks weird. This part is up to you. At this point, be as detailed as you want or need to be depending on what your model is for. Maybe reshape the palm a bit, shape the fingers a little, pull up the top of the hand. You can make the knuckles as pronounced as you want. It'll turn out even better if you match it to a reference. Okay, back to Kakashi. Add an eight-sided circle, rotate, and scale it. Rotate it by 22.5 degrees in side view. Scale it to fit the fingertip. Extrude and scale to make the finger. Add two edge loops slightly forward from the initial position. Add an edge loop on each side of both joints. Select the front top edge and hit F three times to fill in the front. Enable proportional editing with O 
select the bottom front edge and move it on the X axis to shape the fingertips. Select this edge and scale it down. Select all and smooth shade. Add an edge loop near the fingertip. Copy this finger and scale it slightly for each finger. Position and rotate each finger to match the reference. Copy the pointer finger over to become the thumb as well. Rotate it 90 degrees in side view and position it with the reference. Delete most of this finger and grab and scale this edge loop. Put in a few edge loops using the E and F trick. Make a joint here, it's too far forward so I change it later. Select the bottom 5 middle edges on each finger's joints and dissolve edge loops with X. Grab the thumb, position and rotate it. Scale these edge loops to make the thumb look more like a thumb. With all the fingers in place, add a cube in edit mode. Position and scale it to become the hand. Grab this bottom edge and pull it on the Y axis. Same with this edge. Grab the front bottom edge and lift it up. Add a couple edge loops. Scale them along the X axis. Select this face and extrude it. Scale and position it. Add an edge loop down the middle of the hand. Move stuff around to make it look a little bit more like a hand. Grab and move these vertices down. Ctrl L to select all linked, and P to separate by selection. In object mode, select this new object and apply the subdivision modifier. Ctrl select the fingers and Ctrl J to join them into one object. Tab into edit mode. Delete this vertex. And connect the thumb to the hand with faces by spamming F. I decided to archive the hand at this point in case I wanted to go back to an old version. Select all and smooth shade. Now we need to make room for the fingers. Select and delete these front faces. Select a face on every finger, hit Ctrl L to select all linked, and hide the fingers with H. Delete these four edges. Try to square off these finger holes. Alt H in edit mode to unhide the fingers. Attempt to shape the thumb to match the reference. And shape the hand a bit. I created another backup of the hand. Backups can be useful, but I rarely end up needing them. Let's make the finger holes line up with the fingers better. Hide fingers whenever they get in the way. With proportional editing off, move the pinkies opening away from the hand. Select and delete these vertices in the hand opening. I'm going to merge these fingers together. Select a pair of vertices and merge them with M. Selection order is important when you're using merge at last. I usually don't connect my fingers like this, but I think it'll end up looking like fingerless gloves. Use the knife tool and cut in something like this. Edge slide these apart slightly. Use J to join these vertices. And then do something like this. Now, Join the hands to the finger with a few faces here. We're going to join up the bottom of his fingers like this. Edge slide some stuff around. This side of his hand looks a bit too thick, so turn on proportional editing with O and thin his palm out a bit. Smooth out his thumb. Might as well delete the back of his hand, fill in these openings with one quad and two tries and give him some knuckles. His hand needs some work, so I'm gonna slide some stuff around. I don't like how the pinky attaches, so I delete these faces and add in an edge loop. Then select these two vertices and make an edge between them with F. Hit F3 and search for subdivide. Fill in the faces like so. It takes some adjusting. Add a cut in here. Connect in here with J and dissolve these edges. Do some minor adjustments. Delete this backmost edge loop. Select this loop and scale it by zero on the X axis. 
and then position and scale this edge loop to line up with the other parts of his gloves. Dissolve this edge. Join these two vertices with J. Alt select this edge loop and delete it, and then smooth everything out to your liking. I'm going to try to position everything to get the hands looking like Kakashi's signature fingerless gloves. When you're happy with it, add the mirror modifier and use the chest as the mirror object. Also add a mirror modifier to the arm object. The hand's origin seems to be in an odd place, so I'm just going to set the origin to geometry. The model has reached a good point to see what it looks like under some light, so it's time for my light plane. Make sure the Node Wrangler add-on is active in your preferences. Shift A to add a plane. Give it a new transparent material. Add a mix shader and connect an emission shader to the bottom. Select the mix shader, Ctrl T to add this node setup. Select the image texture node and hit Shift S to change it to a gradient texture and change the texture coordinate to object. Turn up the emission strength and now I'm just moving my camera using the transforms menu. You can open this panel by hitting N while hovering over the 3D view tab with your mouse. Then move your lighting into the main collection if it isn't there. Open the Object Properties tab under Visibility, Disable Camera. And I think the model's starting to look pretty good with lighting. Thanks for watching! Join us next time when we model the head. But first, I have something super important that I need to take care of.